Welcome to Michael's online creative art tutorial for junior secondary students. The topic of this video is painting. I'm hoping that by the end of the class you should have been able to you should be able to define number one the term painting, describe the materials for painting, explain the term imaginative composition, discuss the procedure for painting and imaginative composition, and also explain the use of cool and warm colors to achieve atmosphere in your painting. So let's take a look at what painting is. What is, a, how can we define painting? Painting is, painting is defined as the expression of an artist's ideas and colors. So whether it's a crayon painting or color pencil painting, a painting with, with poster color or an acrylic painting, a painting is the expression of an artist's idea, ideas in colors. Now, what are the materials for painting? The materials for painting include a include one a canvas a canvas is a white cloth with a rough surface which easily absorbs paint since we're looking at, uh, at at the surface on which an artist can can do his painting um you should also know that it it's it would include paper a wall a wooden slab etc but a canvas is a professional material used for painting and like i said a canvas is basically cloth material um, with a rough surface, this cloth is usually stretched over a wooden frame and tagged down with tag pins or staples. Now, the canvas is what is laid on an easel. And what's an easel? An easel is a wooden or metal structure on which the canvas is laid during painting. This wooden structure can be dismantled and mounted elsewhere, probably in a garden or by the river bank or by a lake. All the artist does is he, he mounts his... He, he, he mounts his easel, puts his canvas on the easel and begins to paint. Paint brushes, number three. Paint brushes include those which have broad bristol tips or those which have thin bristol tips. Number four, a palette. A palette is a flat surface plate or slab on which the painter mixes his colors or paint. Number five, a paint and paint and colors. A, acrylic paints. These paints are used by professional painters. Uh, they, are, they are used on canvas. They are very thick and have a very brilliant color. B, poster colors. Poster colors are basically used, used are basically for children. They're used especially in primary and secondary schools. C, watercolors. Watercolors are water-based based colors. Very few people use them because of their watery content. Now, six, castor oil or thinner. Castor oil or tinner, these are liquids which are used to dilute paint or colors to make them lighter for use. Castor oil is basically um, golden in color, while tinner, on the other hand, is a white liquid chemical which is also used to dilute colors. Um, for children, poster and watercolors, water is used to dilute them. Well, we have all the materials we didn't I didn't mention here, like pencil, tag paint, water for diluting. But they are these these all are included in as a painting materials. What is an imaginative composition? An imaginative composition is a drawing, painting, or a picture which is derived from the artist's imagination or memory. It could be a drawing or a painting, so long as the paint as an artist does not look at an object or a figure while drawing. These are classified on the imaginative um, on the imaginative composition. An imaginative composition is in sharp difference with a still life composition or a human drawing. Why is it different? Because in a still life drawing, the artist places a bench or a table, puts uh, puts put places objects on them, and he draws. But it's different in an imaginative composition because you can't go to a market or go to a football event or a masquerade, masquerade event, sit down and try to paint the people. It's difficult because you, you, the people are in constant movement. That's why these are called imaginative, uh, imaginative paintings because they come from the memory or imagination. Procedures in painting and imaginative composition. Step one, using pencil, draw the figures and objects of your composition on canvas or paper you should have a comfortable seat because you may be sitting for a long while and use hp pencil because they are soft and can easily be wiped away remember that in tracing and outlining your figures and shape 
you should follow their rule of perspective which states that objects at the background and uh, objects closer to the observer should be drawn bigger while objects far from the observer should be drawn smaller this is especially while drawing landscape nature scenes or still life compositions step two while when arranging and rearranging forms lay emphasis or give more details to important objects or figures while objects with which are less important should be given less details or or, or, or emphasis step three begin to mix and apply your colors with your paintbrush on your canvas or paper mix and match colors together where necessary step four we're going to be looking at cool and warm colors in a little bit but the rule here states that warm colors are used to paint the um background of a painting while warm colors warm colors are used to paint the um foreground of a painting while cool colors are used to paint the background of a painting now what is a background and what is a foreground when you divide your picture page into two the area below is your background while the area below is your foreground step five when when moving from one color to another the point where these colors meet should be blended gradually so that the changes from one color to the other would not be noticed how do we use cool and warm colors to achieve atmosphere we would begin by looking at what a cool color is cool colors are dull and passive they are not very bright they, re they, they represent such things like ice cold and water um, they also used to represent such things as rain water or vegetation like the trees and and, and grasses these colors include blue green and purple while warm colors on the other hand are very bright and very and very active the reminders of heat fire like the sun now these colors are used to paint things like the fire or the or the sunlight now they include red yellow and orange so to me so to use cool and warm colors to achieve atmosphere um, um objects such as the sun and the sky are usually painted in warm colors such as in a fiery red yellow or orange while cool colors are used to paint objects such as vegetation trees grasses rivers or lakes now this these objects are usually represented in green blue or purple green blue or purple okay um for your assignment the assignment goes like this um number one you are going to answer or answer the following questions why is a canvas used for painting number two what are cool and warm colors number three how should objects at the foreground and the background appear during your pencil sketch during painting and the practical use a pencil do the uh, practical drawing i have given to you below thank you